coming um, up. How long have you been married? Been married for, I have no idea anymore. No, 2005, <laughs> that's uh, 19, going on 20 years in May. And uh, are you the head of your wife? Good God, no. But, uh, yeah, I don't. So does she obey you? <laughs> oh, boy, that's a, that's a good, that's funny. You should be a comedian. Uh, <laughs> she uh, obey me? No. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What a mess. Uh, what's important to you? Important to me, uh, family, religion, um, uh, Family, religion, comedy, God, of course, uh, my wife, uh, um, uh, those are the important things. Uh, love hanging out with my kids. They're fun. No. I'm always like coaching soccer or coaching a baseball team, and, right and they always, uh, they know when I'm yelling. How many do you have? Uh, we have three kids. Really? Yes. And um, so you're married. Um, how long have you been married? Been married for, I have no idea anymore. No, 2005, <laughs> that's uh, 19, going on 20 years in May. And uh, are you the head of your wife? Good God, no. You're not uh, the head of your wife? Head of my wife? I'm the head, she's the neck, as they say. Uh, she turns the head left or right, and she's the one that directs everything. Really? And I'm the one that says, that's a great idea. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't. So does she obey you? <laughs> oh, boy, that's a that's a good that's funny you should be a comedian uh she uh <laughs> obey me no we um she uh has great ideas and i say that's a great idea let's do it and then i have um ideas that um aren't so great i don't know what to say let me see uh, does she obey me yeah to the point where she says that's a crazy idea I think you're insane, and uh, let's give it a shot, and I'll show, see what happens. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what the? She's, so, I, I, so she does not obey you? Uh, obey, that's a tough word to say. Uh, uh, she believes in me. That's a good word. She believes in me, <laughs> and she believes in uh, um, some, some of the stuff. Um, I would say she, uh, um, we obey each other. We try to, uh, but you got to admit when it comes to social situations, you put a Farley in the room, it's going to get a little odd, awkward. I'm going to say something wrong. I say something wrong to salesmen. And my kids all go, let's go put John, uh, dad in front of a, that Samson dealership at uh, Best Buy and see what happens. And I'm like, do you, are they noise hand canceling? Head? Yeah. Where are we? And they're all like, he was crazy. Salesmen don't know what I'm talking about. You barely know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm wondering I, now. I ramble sometimes <laughs> and I don't know what I say, but I, I try. So let me ask, what is it like being married to a woman that will not obey you? What is it like to be married to a woman that will not obey me? Right. Um, or does not, will not obey you? Uh, it's freeing. How about if, 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 I, if I did, was married to something like that, I would think that would be a freeing relationship because you don't obey me. Um, let's see what happens. And then, because if you're wrong and you don't obey me, you do something wrong, I'm going to laugh. See, where I come from, if you screwed up, and you and you mess up and you do something wrong, everyone, all four brothers and sister, point the finger and go, ha, 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 right. you're an idiot. And then my dad goes, what's going? Because we're all trying to impress mom and dad. And so if they don't obey uh, and they, they're on their own, they're sailing that ship on their own and they mess up, oh God, it's gonna come raining down on you like they're 4th of July. I don't know, and but so, you're just gonna be like. Oh, and so you're saying, so married to a woman that will not and does not obey you is like, what, let her? It's freeing because you go, okay, then you're gonna be on your own. And then if they mess up, then you get to laugh at them. And you go, <laughs> remember that time? And then it's not just once. You can go, remember that time when you were like, hey, I got a good idea. Let's go left, not right. And we went hit every stoplight, and we went around in a circle, we got in a traffic jam, hit a lady with a shopping cart, and rolled over a stroller, and then we finally got to our destination. I said, go right the whole time, and you went left. 
Really? Uh, and you keep saying that and you keep repeating that. Eventually, uh, you'll go, oh, okay, let's, let's come up with something together and not uh, let's obey each other, right? And so when you, when you, how do you deal with the hell when it comes out of her? How do I deal with you the know, hell when it comes out of her? You know how hell comes out of the women, right? Especially oh, yeah, wives, do. right? Yeah. How do you deal with the hell when it comes out of your wife? Oh, uh, I go silent. <laughs> and then I, I just go silent and I go, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. But then sometimes uh, if you go, uh-huh, yeah, 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 okay, right, right, okay, right, <laughs> right, right. And then you're just saying right because I'm, I'm yelling at you, yeah, right, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. You're not even listening to me, right, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and so that's how you deal with the hell? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, right. What a mess! I know, but I always say I'm sorry, but then I say I'm sorry too much. I'm constantly screwing up, mind you. So you've got to have, she needs a doctorate to, just to be married to me. Really? Oh my God, so many times I've done things. Did you know before you marry her that she were, uh, was not going to obey you? Did I know uh, before I was going to marry that she was not going to obey me? Yes. No, everyone obeys everybody you, eventually. They, they put get, on a front, huh? They put on a front, yes. And so when you woke up the morning after the night of the honeymoon, well, did you think, okay. did you say, oh my God, what have I done here? Who is this person? No, it never happens that way. What? <laughs> it does, it, it slowly develops. <laughs> I screw up enough times that eventually she's going to go, holy God, this man can't We've got to sail this ship together. I made sure I married a girl that we could sail the ship together, that I wasn't the, hey, follow me, young lady. I've got it all planned out. And really? I, oh, my God. Who does have it planned out? Nobody does. Did, uh, did your mother obey your father? Did my mom obey my father? Uh, they were uh, uh, funny. My dad was a comedian kind of a deal, and my mom was the prankster. So she was the one that was always coming up with like, she'd be the one that was the devil, devil's advocate of things. Like say, so why don't you shove it up your butt? <laughs> and then she'd be like, I don't know who said that, who said that? Uh, so she did not obey your father? She obeyed her, she obeyed him uh, uh, as much as, as, much as uh, you, you uh, could obey, uh, but she'd get in trouble. For sure she would get in trouble. And then she would say, uh, well, I don't know what happened. What's going on? And then she could yell back. They both yell, and then they'd always nudge one of the kids. <laughs> Watch this. This meatloaf is pretty dry. <laughs> and then you'd hear my mom in the kitchen go, "How dare you!" and start yelling. So it was difficult for your father to deal with your mother. It was difficult uh, for my father. No, no. I think they uh, they enjoyed ribbing each other. That's what they enjoyed. So it was good back and forth banter, and the audience was the kids, and we'd always watch. Like, mm, look at this fight. This is fun. Who were you closer to? You? Oh, the Emily. Oh, the Hold ambulance. On one minute, yeah. I called that. For... Every time we taped the show, somebody died. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I, that's gonna happen. Every time we tape, somebody dies. Oh boy, they asked us to stop taping, but no. <laughs> And so who were you closest to, your father or your mother? Uh, closest to my, uh, my mom, uh, but I, uh, I, tried to, um, I tried to impress my dad, but I was closest to my mom. And why not closer to your father? Oh, because he, uh, he, he was very smart. He was a genius. He was very, 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 very smart, and uh, he, uh, he, knew, uh, he knew quite a bit. I went for advice to my dad and stuff. But uh, I'd always try, and he was the one you'd show the third grade artwork to. Like, look what I did. I drew this. Right. Look Absolutely. what I did. Look what I did. Dad, I can do a flip off the diving yeah. board. And then my mom would be like, hey, I uh, knocked up a girl on the... No, I never said that. <laughs> uh, but I'd always you know, go to my mom with, uh, with advice about uh, you know, different things or plans. You make plans with mom, and then with dad, you try to impress. Right. And so when you were a kid and you were asked your father to help you deal with your mother, uh, would he help you deal with her? Uh, no, we never, we didn't. I don't, I don't remember having a conversation. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like, Dad, Mom's not letting me go to this uh, guy's house and I want to go. Or she imposes her will on you. Yeah. You know, her mother trying to control you. Yeah. Impose your will and all that. Would your father help you deal with that when it happened? 
No, I what they like maybe but it always seemed like they were a united front. So they were they already it, 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 I got the feeling that they had already spoken before and they were very good at manipulating these children. We're talking Farley children here, so we needed manipulation. We needed uh, something, some trick up their sleeve. And their trick would always be, I heard you come in at 3 in the morning last night. And you go, I oh, know, it was 1 o'clock. And they go, aha, I knew it was later than you were supposed to be in. I'm like, but you said 3. So did you forgive him for not protecting you from your mother? Did you tell him, uh, I'll forgive you for no. not protecting me from my mother? Protecting me, uh, yeah. My mom, uh, she was five foot two. And we were all gigantic 300 pound children. And, but she had a wielding a, a giant wooden spoon, which uh, we'd always laugh. She'd break wooden spoons over our heads and backs and everything. We'd be like, <laughs> that's cute. Look at, she tried to tame us. And she'd be like, stop, do what I say. And smash the thing would break and we'd laugh at her. And she'd be like, please boys, please. We'd be like, all right, mom. And then she all gave us a t-shirt. Uh, about five years ago, that says, I'm a survivor of the Wooden Spoon Club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a mess. Yeah.